It's a great pleasure on Remember When to welcome to our program and to Melbourne itself, Donald Sindon. Good evening, Donald. Hello. Good afternoon. Good evening to you. Good evening. Well, now, you won't know our voices. Bruce welcomed you, and I'm Philip, and we're thrilled to have you in Melbourne with uh, Ronnie Corbett for a play at the Comedy Theatre called Two Into One, which begins, we understand, on the 5th of January. You've got it all wrong, you know. It's a play it's called Out of Order. That's right. Out of Order, yes. It is a guessing game. But that's what Phil's about, you see. He'll do that to uh, to g keep you guessing. Yes. Oh, well, you were previously in Ray Cooney's Two Into One, weren't you? Previously in Two Into One, that's right, yes. Absolutely. It was uh, eight years ago, and then this is uh, Ray Cooney's latest play, uh, Out of Order. So is this your first Christmas in Melbourne, Donald? It is indeed. The first Christmas, and I'm, we've had a wonderful time. Absolutely wonderful. Because um, one can't get used to the fact of um, Christmas being summertime. Well, it's not too summery tonight. It's pouring with rain. It is absolutely pouring with rain, but thank goodness we chose yesterday to go to the uh, uh, MCG uh, for the game, uh, for the cricket, and uh, it was a fine all day yesterday. And then today we've been down onto the coast where it's been fine all day below... Um, do, do, do you know a place called... Is, is it Mornington? Yes. Yes, do you know down there? The Mornington Peninsula, yes. The Mornington Peninsula, yes. We've been on there today. Donald, how many times have you been to Australia? This is the second time. The first time was in 1970. Yes. We were over with the Royal Shakespeare Company, and I was playing Malvolio in Twelfth Night. In 1970, yes. Well, this is a far cry out of order to Twelfth Night. It is, it is. Well, I try to split my time between doing um, the classics and uh, farces. Farces are the most difficult. That's why I try to do one every every five years or so to keep my hand in. Well, in filmmaking, you're, you're known and loved out here a lot for the Doctor in the House series, which were, in fact, uh, farces in themselves, weren't they? Mm. There's a technical difference between a farce and a comedy. Yes, they would be defined strictly as comedies. Um, uh, uh, one of the critics in England, James Agate, perpetrated the best remark. He said that uh, uh, comedy is unreal people in real situations. Farce is real people in unreal situations. Well, that's well put, isn't it? Well, for example, Molière, he wrote farce, didn't he? Yes, indeed. Yes. You obviously like the works of, of Ray Cooney. Is this really a, a sequel to the play you did previously, Two Into One, Donald? Uh, they're the same two characters that appear in it. Not a, it's not a sequel in any way, but the same two characters. That'd be Richard Willey. And I, I had the, the theatre right and the date right, didn't I? The Comedy Theatre on the 5th of January. That's right. Comedy Theatre, Melbourne. Who's starring with you in the play? Uh, Ronnie Corbett. Right. Is it just a two-man play? Oh, dear me, no. There are 12 of us in the cast. Yes. And uh, we're, we're playing the two leads. And we've come out from England. And we've um, met here and an Australian cast for all the other characters. And they are absolutely marvellous. Well, Donald Sinton leaving comedy for a moment, going back into your early career, uh, The Cruel Sea, for example, was a very dramatic uh, picture and a dramatic role for you. Well, well indeed, that was my first film. Yes. Tell us about that and the days uh, and the people you knew on the set. Oh, dear, oh, dear. What a wonderful question. Well, in 1952, I made my first film, which was Cruel Sea, and then by which time I'd been on the stage ten years. Uh, would you rather nice, because I, I made my first appearance in... Um, or January 26, 1942. So on the January 26th coming up, I'll have been an actor for 51 years. That's marvellous. Which is rather nice. It's, it's something you obviously love doing. It's great to be paid for something you love. It is. Well, now don't tell the management, but it's one, one of those jobs I do for nothing. You know? Oh, us too. We'd love, we love it here. Tell us about some of the films like The Cruel Sea and Day of the Jackal and, and Villain and some of the people that you've starred with. Well, I, Some of the memorable people that you know. I was under contract for eight years uh, with the rank organization, and I made 28 films in that time. Um, just one after the other. So De Curlsey was the first, then followed by Doctor in the House, and Doctor at Large, and Mogambo. Um, there was the only American film. No, no, I did one for Disney's after that called um, The Islands at the Top of the World. Well, if Phil and I were talking about Mogambo, was that... Uh... <laughs> me. Clark Gable and Marilyn Munro? Uh, no, no, you're nearly right. You know, come along. I'll, I'll take a bet on this. Now, I, I heard on your... Uh, was it you were saying earlier that you're having a game this evening with three questions from um, Trivial Pursuit? Yes. yes, we do, Donald. Yes, right. When am I going to hear the questions? Oh, oh they, you want some? Yes. 
Oh, we'll All try right. you Let's out try you right now. Right, O'Donnell. Um, ask movie questions, Bruce. Okay. What held in his trunk gave Dumbo the courage to fly? Good God, what? What? It's D Dumbo, the Disney character, stuck something in his trunk that allowed him to fly. What was it? Why, it's his ears made him fly. I can't accept that. It was a feather. It was a feather. <laughs> yes. I've tried this one, Donald. What comic strip mystic had Lothar as a sidekick? You know, you'd better, I'd better turn off straight away. I don't do any of these. Uh, the comic strip was Mandrake the Magician. Oh. Who sang, Oh, oh, I'm falling in love again back in 1958? Who sang, Oh, oh, I'm falling in love again? I bet my wife doesn't even know that one. Do you, do you know that one? Who sang that one? No, we don't know the answer to that Jimmy one. Rogers. Jimmy Rogers. And, and finally, Donald, no, good am I. for a bottle of your lumber <laughs> wine, what was the first Mel Brooks film to feature Marty Feldman? Well, now, that I ought to know. Um, I'm afraid I don't get to the cinema nearly as much as I should. Not, neither do we, obviously. No, because I spend all my time in the theatre. You see, I get to the cinema. It, and the film was Young Frankenstein. <laughs> You, you talked about going uh, to America for Magambo. Um, who are some of the American actors that you admire? Um, well, I was working on that one with um, Clark Gable, Ava Gardner, and Grace Kelly in, in that film. You get a chance to get to know these people well when you're on location? Oh, yes, because I was on that one for six months. So I got to know them all very, very well indeed. I think you. Were, I heard you speaking to Margaret Fletcher about Grace Kelly. She ke uh, not keeps in contact with you now, but she was a great friend of yours. She indeed was. Yes, I mean, we, we were very, very close over, over that film. And every time she came to London after that, we, we'd always get the call from her, and we'd meet for. You know, if, if I was in the play, she'd come and see it. We'd have supper afterwards, and she was a dear person, really dear. I uh, one of my very favourite films, Donald Sindon, was The Day of the Jackal. I can't recall what part you played. I was in. Uh, I suppose when you're travelling around, you get sick to death of the, the questions that, that people ask you. And I suppose you've got to, to be as enthusiastic with each interview, don't you? Uh, no, no, because I, I never get the same questions twice. Tell us about some of the exotic locations you've been on for your, for your film and television work, Donald. Oh, um, this is rather like a telephone call to England. You get that slight pause between the question and the answer, don't you? Um, I, I hear a little peep every now and again. Is it when I get onto the air? Yeah, yeah that little beep is legally uh, to tell you that you're being broadcast. Oh, I see. Do you mean this is live now? Oh, yes. yes. Didn't what, you what? know that? I thought this was a recorded interview for going out to borrow. Oh, oh no, no, no. We're speaking to you live on a program called Remember When. And but I'm but asking you, but, you about some of the... the but you've been very good, though. You've been very good, Donald. I the bay. I mean, the people are actually listening to this at this minute. That yes, yes. And you've given us no reason to stop tape so far. Can you hear me all right? Because, um, I mean, I... Uh, I don't usually use a microphone. I don't bother. I mean, uh, would you like me to use one now? Well, it might be a bit difficult over the phone. Oh, yes. Mm. No, no, you're doing fine. We're talking about some of the locations of the different films you've been on. Have they taken you to countries like Africa and uh, and uh, the East? My favourite story of uh, locations, when, um, when I was on the contract, we, we virtually had to do the next film that was offered. And one of the producers of Pinewood Studios said, he said, I've got a marvellous script coming up. And I can't believe, you can't hardly believe it, we're doing a three-month location on a liner around the, cruising around the Greek islands. And I said, uh, cut me in. He said, well, do you want to read the script? And I said, no, 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 don't bother about that, I'll be in it. Lovely, it's three months on, a, on an island, uh, on a liner around the Greek islands. So what was the film, Donald? Uh, this was to be called The Captain's Table. Yes. And oh, is this a remake of the Alec Guinness film? Oh, no, 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 but a month before the film was due to start, he rang me up and he said, I've got a bit of bad news. He said, the budget won't go to Greece. He said, it's now still on the same liner for three months, but it's around the Channel Islands, in the English Channel. Ah, what a disappointment. What a disappointment. I said, oh, well, nevertheless, it's three months on a, li on a liner. It'd be rather lovely, you see. And ten days before the film started, I was having some costume fittings, and the wardrobe man looking after me, having these fittings done, he said, is bad news about the Channel Islands, isn't it? And I said, what do, you, what, what, what do you mean? He said, well, then, we're not doing the Channel Islands. I said, well, where are we going? He said, Tilbury. <laughs> <laughs> it's the docks area of London. Wow. 
last years. And we made the entire film on a liner, tied up at the, at the, in the Tilbury docks. What a letdown. Shooting out to sea on one side, and then every now and again they had to turn the ship round so we could shoot over the other side of the ship. <laughs> Donald, you must have got a bit homesick yesterday or the day before, Christmas Day. Did you... Uh... Yes, well, we telephoned all the family in. And uh, we've, got, we've got two sons, both married, so we've got four grandchildren. And so we made a point of phoning them all yesterday, doing yesterday, the no, day before. And um, we had a magnificent lunch here at the hotel in Melbourne at the Rockman's Regency. Uh, am I not allowed to say that? Of course. Of course. <laughs> what what the, makes friends, uh, I bet it was better than the Tilbury Docks. <laughs> Listeners tonight, of course, associate you with a very successful television series, Never the Twain, with Windsor Davies. Oh, yes, did you had that here, did you? Oh, of course. Oh, good. What's your favourite uh, art form? Would it be the theatre? Would it be television? Would it be films? With television, uh, sorry, it is, uh, first and foremost, the theatre. Because I, I've often said to people, I mean, supposing that, um, I don't know if your game's football, but I mean, yes, yeah, suppose it was football. Suppose I said, now, look, uh, you can have two tickets for the final at the MCG, or you can see it on television, which would you prefer? And everybody seems to say that they'd rather be present at the ground. Well, it's exactly the same difference between the theatre and television. I suppose you love that audience reaction. The reaction, yes. And it's no two performances ever, are ever identical. Well, it's been lovely chatting to you. Well, what have you got to go somewhere? <laughs> yes, we must wind it up. But uh, it's been lovely talking to you. Talking. You, you go and have your cup of coffee and keep talking. <laughs> What we love about you is that you can laugh at yourself, Donald. Indeed, indeed. Can't we all? Yes, I mean, that's, what the, that's what the name of the game, isn't it? Ever had an embarrassing moment on stage where everything went wrong for you? We've had the scenery falling down on several occasions, yes. yes. Um, that's probably the most embarrassing thing. I do feel rather stupid. Was, it, was this Shakespeare? Uh, oddly enough, in The Tempest. Yes. yes. Oh, that was appropriate. The, the aerial. Have you had the opportunity of working uh, with Ronnie Corbett previously? No, I've known Ronnie for some 40 years now, but we've um, never worked together before. Is this the world premiere of Out of Order here in Melbourne? Not the world premiere. We did it for nine months in London. And who was your co-star there? Uh, Michael Williams. Yes. If you know him, and uh, he played it in London, but uh, he's tied up doing television over there, and so... Um, Bless his heart, thank goodness. Michael, uh, Ronnie Corbett's doing it. Yeah. Would well, you like to just tell us the the theme of the play, out of order, what we can expect in this comedy? It's, it's all a bit naughty, you know. I'm playing, playing um, the junior, a junior minister in the present government in England, a married chap, due to be at an all-night sitting in the House of Commons. And unbeknown to anybody, I booked a room in a Westminster hotel for myself and one of the secretaries of the leader of the opposition. And um, we get, get ourselves into this hotel room, and I say, you must have a look at the view right across the River Thames. It's very beautiful. So she pulls back the curtains, and there's a dead body stuck in the window. Now, what does one do? There's the problem. Uh, we can't tell the manager because this girl is not supposed to be in the room. I can't call the police because I'm not supposed to be there. We can't call the House of Commons because that's where I'm supposed to be. And um, the only thing I can think of doing is calling my parliamentary private secretary from the House of Commons, who played by Ronnie Corbett, to come and help me out of the problem. And he comes across, and of course, um, as the, mo the more we lie trying to get ourselves out of this problem, the worse it becomes. It is a good, totally good problem, rather like your trivial pursuits problem. Uh, what do you do with a dead body? How yeah. Get rid of it. Well, we'll find out when uh, you open up the comedy theatre in Ray Cooney's Out of Order. Donald Sindon starring with Ronnie Corbett, and I think it'll be a very long and successful season with us. Lovely. And we welcome you to Melbourne and hope we can catch up eye to eye in the future. How splendid of you. Well, thank you very, very much indeed. Lovely talking to you. <laughs>
thank you for spending time with us tonight on Remember When, Donald. Would, would, would you wish uh, all your listeners a... No, I can do it myself, can't I? Of course. May I wish you all a very, very happy and prosperous New Year. Thank you so much, Donald. Donald Sindon. Good night.